Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got new decks for you. As always, we have decks for the new cards, but we also have decks for those of you who didn't get the new cards. Let's get started by telling you what we're going to do today. So I'm going to begin with a quick favor request. If you are willing, if you are able, if you at all have the time, please watch through this whole video. We're trying desperately to up our watch time. We try to uh, bring you value from the beginning of the video to the end of the video. So if you can at all keep watching, please do so. Even if you end up just letting it play, it means the world to us and helps us grow. Also, a quick reminder, tomorrow, and I believe the SnapFan uh, Twitch account, the SnapFan World Championship is happening. This is basically everyone who finished in the top, I want to say, four of any SnapFan Open or any Snap Battle Arena Open, or then there's a third tournament that I wasn't a part of and I don't remember the names of, but all of the best players who finished at the top of tournaments are in a giant tournament on Saturday. Please make sure you check that out. I'm super excited. And hey, if you're new here, we cover tournaments. I don't think it's actually going to be our Sunday video, though, because I actually think the cut of the tournament's going to be Sunday. My guess would be the Monday video will cover the tournaments. We'll talk more about this as we go forward. Next, our first deck is from the always great Paper. Paper has been a player who's shaken up the meta before and has a really, really cool pixie deck that we're going to look at. Then we're going to do our giveaway and questions of the day. We have giveaway winners. We have our first chunk of giveaway winners. There will be technically seven freaking more giveaway winners being announced in Sunday's video, so stay tuned for that. Then we've got our friend Lufku. Lufku has a deck that's sort of similar to Paper's deck, but doesn't use any of the new cards and only has one high series card in it that's totally replaceable. So if you're looking for a really great deck to climb that is proven to be able to succeed, that's that deck for you. After that, we'll do like five or six weekend mission decks. Then we're going to close out the show with a Lambie's deck. Lambie is arguably the best player in Marvel Snap. I think he's got competition for that spot, and that competition just started streaming. Hi, Dachio. So, in my opinion, one of the two best, and still, as of now, unseated as the best player in Marvel Snap, we have Lambie series. Lambie has updated his Thanos deck to include Hope, so we're going to take a look at that. We'll end as we always do with our shop and shoutouts. All right, so our first deck is Paper Pixie. This has a 64% win rate. It was basically the only thing used to climb to infinite. So we've got like a good 60, 70 game sample here, which is, you know, a good enough sample to know that this deck is good. Pixie is a card that very often is going to just be slotted into a deck. You're going to see that when we talk about weekend mission decks. What you do is you take a deck that is otherwise good and you say, Pixie plus Mobius. And if you have a really like high low cost curve, it ends up winning a lot more because that's what Pixie does. Simple enough. This deck, the reason I'm featuring it, the reason it's getting the pullout fe uh, feature treatment is it does more with Pixie. Instead of just slotting into a deck, it says, how do we make Pixie the centerpiece of a deck? And the answer to that is use Valkyrie and Shang-Chi. Um, those cards, well, are just lane winners, right? Like they can single-handedly dominate a lane. On the other hand, cards like Ant-Man, Dazzler, the Demon, um, and the Doombots just add a lot of power to lane, and with those, you steal another lane, plus, especially if you pump with Blue Marvel, and then with Valkyrie or Shang-Chi, you win another lane. And if those are cheap, you get the ability to play out all of these cards at once and absolutely dominate in Marvel Snap. You love to see it. Also, an opportunity to play the great Squirrel Girl, which I have the wonderful Dan Hip variant for. Okay, so this is built for Pixie and Mobius, but Pixie and Mobius can fit anywhere. Um... The Lufku deck is sort of a Patriot version of this deck, so we can build this for Pixie and Mobius, but it's workable in other ways, and Pixie and Mobius can fit anywhere, but this particular build of it is where we want to play it. Also, check out our homie Paper at twitch.tv slash paper, paper with two R's on Twitch. Paper is awesome, really good person, really good friend. Go check him out. All right, so this is a joy to play. I got a couple games in on this. I haven't had a lot of time to play it. This week has been hell, but we're having... A nice calm weekend where we will get to infinite and have some more fun so turn one is just play one turn two if you can play pixie um and then mobius and if you play pixie and mobius from there you're just playing kind of whatever you can the turn by turn is useless because a lot's going to depend on what the hell pixie does right if you don't see pixie dazzler or tumor ones is fine turn three mobius basically no matter what or dazzler and ones turn four is your last chance for pixie and you only really do that if you mo uh, mobius done three 
despite it being energy inefficient, I would usually Pixie on two, even without a one to play, and then Mobius on turn um, four. Sorry, Pixie on three and Mobius on four, rather than vice versa, despite it being slightly more energy efficient. Um, turn four, you don't usually want to Pixie unless you only have... Um, well, even if you only have, you just really don't want to Pixie right at the end of the game. Uh, turn without Mobius. Turn five, you play Blue Marvel. Rogue and Shang make good sense too. And turn six is either control cards like Valk, Rogue, and Shang, or Doctor Doom. And if you're lucky, Doom is cheap. And if you can Doom and Valk, you giggle all the way to the bank. This deck is sick. It's really, really fun. It's really simple. It absolutely feasts on bots. People keep asking me how you know you can beat bots. And the simplest way to beat bots is to um, play a lot of your power late in the game. Bots like to snap when they're ahead early. And if they're snapping when they're ahead early, your deck is playing, you're playing control deck like Sarah or this or Hitmonkey or Bounce or whatever. You add all that power late in the game and the opponent bot does not know so they stay in they can't read how much power you're going to add right or they can and don't read how much power you're going to have and so you're able to win that game of marvel snap and steal extra cubes along the process oh quick quick hip count before we go any further sorry my fault wasp ant-man squirrel girl dazzler uh mobius blue marvel so six hips not bad we've also got the rian uh valkyrie which is my favorite valkyrie my favorite doom in this list and uh, I did buy the new Pixie. All right, season pass giveaway. We gave away, we're giving away way too many season passes. We hit 9,000 subs. In fact, as of right now, we are almost at 10,000. Please help us along our way um, as we try and get to 10,000 subscribers. This is our season pass giveaway. We gave away um, the season pass, everything from last Monday up to this very video. We're not counting yesterday's video, Thursday's video, or today's video, Friday's video. Yet, we're going to give those away on Sunday's video because I want to give people time to comment on them without, like, cutting people short. So, in a couple slides, we're going to do the giveaways for everything else. Cool? The Twitter giveaway is still live. This is also the last day of that. Um, we'll pull those five. I will message those people on Twitter and we'll announce it again in Sunday's video who those people are. Again, because I said it lasted until this Friday. Today is Friday. So, get the idea. Um, we're giving away still. That's like seven more season passes to give away, which is one of the reasons to subscribe. We do a giveaway like that. We also get exclusive decks here on the channel from top players all the freaking time. What else do we do? Um, three brand new decks every single weekday. We cover bundles. We do custom cards. We are the most thorough and consistent Marvel Snap content. In fact, as of right now, the Marvel Snap Snap Judgments podcast now lives here on this YouTube channel, which means you're getting seven days of new videos on the channel. Show some love. Check it out. I think we're going to bring you some of the best Marvel Snap content, and I hope you think so, too. All right. So, oh, wait, where'd that? There it goes. Okay, giveaway winners are after questions today. Whew. You can see who won the giveaway in two seconds. Sorry. So Jim Shrapnick asks how I decide what decks to keep and get rid of, given the limited space. Um... So very rarely do many decks last more than about two weeks for me, but I have a document of my decks for the week. I call it my sleeper decks document where each deck I have for the week is stored. When I want to play them, I just pull them off that. They're all Marvel Snap Zone links. I download it off Marvel Snap Zone and put it right into the game. That's basically how I deal with it. Very rarely, again, do I have an older deck. The oldest deck I had that was just deleted, now I have basically all fairly modern decks, was... Um, when Grandmaster first came out, I ended up building a Grandmaster Darkhawk Iron Man deck that I really, really loved. It was running both um, Ravona and Zabu, and it did a really amazing job of, like, using Ravona to, like, um, make Rock Slide and Black Widow game-winning, and I loved it, but they made Darkhawk no longer work with Ravona, and then Ravona just didn't have enough targets in the deck, and the deck fell apart, so I deleted that. It hurt a little bit, but usually I don't keep decks for very long. I like new decks. Galdarian asks where to start reading Fantastic Four. I said yesterday, Fantastic Four is, I think, when it's good, the strongest run in comics. Um, there are three runs I would go grab. I would grab the late 90s Mark Wade run, basically immediately. Um, there's obviously other good runs. These are my three favorites. I can list you 20 more. We're going to go with three. Galdarian, um, please start with the Mark Wade, Fantastic Four. It's from the late 90s. It's absolutely stellar. It does some of the best and most influential stuff that we're still feeling rever uh, reverberations from today, including stuff with um, the Fantastic Four's daughter, Valeria, and Doctor Doom. And just, it's an absolutely stellar and impactful run. 
The next run I would read, and my personal favorite, is the Jonathan Hickman run. Um, Jonathan Hickman did this giant sweeping epic with the characters where he took them in totally different directions, um, brought in basically every character from the mythos, changed them in meaningful ways, and then put them back in the box. It ended up leading into the new Avenger, uh, his Avengers run, but you don't, you can stop at the end of the Fantastic Four, and the Fantastic Four run works perfectly on its own. It's probably, not necessarily, definitely, but probably my favorite Marvel Comics run ever. And then finally, we have the current run. Um, I am a giant Ryan North stan, for anyone who doesn't know. I think his comics work is incredible, and How to Invent Everything is one of my, was my sleeper book that we talked about last week. He's currently writing Fantastic Four issues, where he does at most one to two issue story arcs, and it's just... It's just stellar, compact comics that always have this sense of wonder and weirdness to them. And like wonder and weirdness and exploration are the Fantastic Four along with family. And it's just a joy. These characters are archetypical, but they're also really human. And it's just great. All right, Billy Brown Bear wonders the game would be better without so many updates and new cards. It's going to be an opinion, right? Some people think so. Uh, I personally do not. I The lack of OTAs over this last month made me deeply sad. One of my favorite things in card games is finding new stuff, as you can tell, since we do three new decks every day. And um, one of the ways that Marvel Snap enables me to do that is by updating constantly. Since this month didn't update as much, I'm not going to lie, I got more bored than I usually do. Uh, as long as there's something new to be doing, I'm almost never bored. But when I end up doing the same thing too much, I don't enjoy myself. So Jinx wants to know what top tier card I dislike the most. I mean, top tier is the issue here. Right now, the answer is probably Kyra. I don't like the lack of interactivity she promotes. I like the push and pull of destruction, the push and pull of things working for and against each other. Um, I'm also kind of over Deadpool. Like, Deadpool was a really cool novelty. Deadpool didn't exist in, like, in a really competitive sense until, like, pff, October but it's been the same deck for so long that, like, the rest of Destroy, I think, is reasonably cool. But, like, the just, like, 30-power Deadpool on top of everything else is just kind of dull to me. I don't really enjoy it. Um, give me back Kitty Pride, please. If you'd like your questions read out in tomorrow's video, just leave one in the comments. Priority answers is always for Patreons, but you won't have a problem getting your question on. I've got a question doc with a ton of them, and I promise I do my best to get to everything. Our giveaway winners, and this is the each video that these people won from. We've got Glass HC, uh, Pwned Banana, Love Snapping, Cupidy, Radiant Ivy, and you know uh, there were two videos that day. That was an OTA day. Emmanuel and and uh, Emmanuel Len uh, Lenacar, excuse me. Pensit Canton, can't replace that season pass. Sorry, Pensit. Hugh Wolke, Jose De La Torre, and Mr. Daniel Leake. I messed up on the 3-5 video and didn't, uh, Man Thing wasn't released. So I gave away an extra season pass on that one. Thank you for understanding. And then James Stone. So we're giving away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're giving away 18 season passes right now. And we're probably going to give away a few more extra. I've already given away a few more extra. I gave away one on Roby Street and so on. So, hey, um, congrats to our winners. Email me, snapjudgespodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget, there's still going to be two more videos that are carrying season passes of this one and yesterday's. Do me a favor, though, if you were joining for the season pass, hopefully you've had some fun with us. Stick around. I promise you, we're doing good stuff. You'll get better at Marvel Snap. You'll have fun. Make this a larger part of your life. You'll enjoy the hobby more. All right, Lufku's Iron Patriot. I told you this deck was similar. This is instead of um, using Valkyrie, saying I'm going to use a similar concept of flood the board, pump my stuff, and win. It's even got the Rogue and Shang-Chi thing together. Um, it's using Onslaught, which I always really like in Patriot List and I kind of miss. It is not running Mystique, which makes me a little bit sad. But um, So Mystique means you kind of have to hold Patriot until you have the right thing, right? Onslaught means you don't. It also guarantees you a lane more or less with, with uh, Iron Man and can just make kind of Dazzle. Like if you go Patriot, Dazzler, Onslaught, you can end up with a really huge lane. Yes, this deck does completely fold to Enchantress, so if you're seeing Enchantress, please do not play this. But otherwise, you should be relatively safe. Um, it's really, really good. I am I like Patriot more than most of my fellow content creator brethren, largely because I got Patriot Mystique really early in Series 3, so they carried me for a little while as I was trying to climb and learning how to navigate Series 3. 
So I have um, this Patriot, this Blue Marvel, and this Doom with gold backgrounds. Like, I really love this deck. Oh, and this Shang-Chi. Uh, all right, Iron Lad is the only high series card here, and he can pretty easily be Absorbing Man. Fundamentally, Absorbing Man after Brood or Mr. Sinister are phenomenal. Iron Lad gives you a chance to hit Iron Man, Doom, Blue Marvel, etc., etc. So either which way, you're fine. And you can check out our friend Lufku playing this deck at twitch.tv slash Lufku9. Check him out. I believe there might be an underscore after that, but if you type Lufku9, you'll find him. All right, so this is our non-new card deck of the day, basically making sure that we are supporting all of our viewers. So turn one pass, turn two Dazzler over Sinister, turn three Brood over Patriot, um, turn four Lad, Brood, or Patriot, turn five Iron Man, Blue Marvel, or a three plus a two. And then you Doom, Onslaught, or Rogan Chong is needed. Don't forget, if you drop Onslaught on top of like a Patriot and a Dazzler, that's an absolute ton of power, both in that lane and across your board. It's a very strong deck, and it's a very cool deck, and it's really simple and straightforward to play. This is, however, also a relatively low hip deck. We're Wasp, we're Dazzler, we're Brood, Lad, Man, oh man, we're doing fine. Blue Marvel and Onslaught, we're at seven. Forget I said that. We're doing great with hips in this deck. I also really enjoy this play style. If you haven't played it, um, it's worth messing around with. I think you'll be entertained, and then you'll get bored of it eventually, but hey, whatever. You'll have climbed ranks, right? That's what really matters. This deck hit infinite as an exclusive play. All right, we've got two Hope decks, two Pixie decks, and then one with both. Um, we did the Silky Smooth Hope deck yesterday, and we did the um, one other Hope deck yesterday. Silky Smooth and Bounce Hope decks yesterday. And the day before, oh no, both were yesterday. So if you want those decks, just check yesterday's video. We did the full guide on them. Cool. We've got two more Pixie decks and then one deck with both. And then even with that deck with both, then there's one version of that deck that only has Hope. So I shared that too. So this is Hope Summer Surfer. I have no idea who made this. I do my very best to know, but I don't know who made this. Um, it's got a really high win rate in like 70 games. I think it's super cool. It, um, obviously uses hope as a way to cheat out surfer i really like the idea of if you don't see sarah in a hope list you can um go hope into um and then if you play like i don't care a spider-man or whatever on hope on turn four then on turn um five you can play two threes and on six you can play two threes that's one more three than you can play by just playing sarah which means your surfer is better seems like it's pretty good right you can also, if you played an extra one there, do Sarah into Absorbing Man. Uh, sorry, do Surfer into Absorbing Man on turn six, which is pretty damn strong as well. So I think that this is a very cool list, and I like it a lot. Um, and look, you have plenty of other ways to win, right? You can still go Brood, Absorbing Man, Surfer, Nonsense, and still win the game. Goose is really strong. Whoever put this together, huge props. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. I will happily give credit. You know I love giving credit. All right, this is Hope Summer's Pure Move. Again, I don't know who made this, but um, this one matters a little less because this is just sort of all the move cards jammed together with Hope. Um, it's also got the Falcon thing. I am shocked to see um, Falcon and not Beast. Most times, Kingpin would be in that Beast spot, and then we basically have the Shuri Enjoyer list, except with Hope jammed in. Um, move needs energy, guys. Like, if you've never played Move, Move very often just wants an extra energy. Hope Summer says, let's have that extra energy without any real downside, and that's game-winning in Move. This, again, has a reasonably high win rate. It's lower than the others, but we've covered most of the other high win rate Hope decks. Like, this doesn't have the win rate of the Silky Smooth Move. This doesn't have the win rate of this previous Surfer deck. It doesn't have the win rate of um yesterday's other one, the uh, Bounce deck. But it's still got a good win rate, and it's a competitive deck um, heading into Infinite. Next up, we have Pixie Jane Jaw. We did a Pixie Jane deck yesterday, um, but not a Jane Jaw. For those of you who want to play some Lockjaw, can't blame you. Lockjaw is a really fun card, and one of the ways to play Lockjaw without really losing out is to have Yellow Jack and Wasp in the deck. So this is one of those decks that you just sort of throw Pixie and Mobius in because they're just extra upside. Um, you're less likely to get anything amazing from them unless Wasp and Yellow Jacket are in the deck. So use Lockjaw to try and make sure Wasp and Yellow Jacket are in the deck. Because if you can get something like, a, I don't know, a Zero Cost Odin or whatever nonsense, you're going to do really great with this. Lockjaw is a 5, it's just reasonable power. If you don't see Pixie, feel free to throw Mobius into Lockjaw without any real concerns. Or you can just Jane and get what you want, right? Like you can Thor, Lockjaw, Jane to get what you want. This is still strong. This is still really good and powerful and it's got 
the highest win rate of any Pixie deck, except for the one we're about to look at that plays both cards. Uh, this deck is specifically, oh, sorry. Um, I saw who made the change. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm not doing my job as well as I usually do. It's really late and we recorded the podcast earlier. Sorry. Um, we've got the Revis Pixie Dump. This one is specifically Revis's deck, uh, except no substitutions. This one is just saying, I'm running a bunch of ones and sixes. So, like, if I can go Pixie Mobius, then I don't know. Sometimes I get a one cost Infinite, and that's usually pretty damn good, right? She Hulk works great here. Um, this deck, I think, wants Hope too, but whatever. Um, it's running Cosmo Norman instead, so that it has a safe way to destroy her. Um, it's great. I don't know how else to put it. This deck is great. It's absolutely dominant. Opponents, including bots, including real people, have a really hard time playing against it. Um, if your opponent isn't playing Mobius and you get the Pixie Mobius thing, please snap, because it's very likely one of your sixes gets cheaper, even if, like, your infinite costs four, right? If your infinite costs four because it switched with Dracula, you can still go, like, um, Martyr, Infinite, um, zero and then you can play destroyer the next turn which is just like silly sauce this is a very very good deck and one worth trying out next up we have the high evo pixie hopefully you've seen this deck because it is everywhere this is the winningest deck with pixie it is the one that uses hope also and the real power here you'll note no magic despite infinite and shield well that's because you play a um generally speaking a cyclops on hope on turn four or whatever really but cyclops is the goal and then you skip, and then you go She-Hulk and either Hulk or Infinite, and you win a bajillion cubes. You can also win. That's one play pattern. The other way you win is you go Pixie into Mobius. If you go Pixie into Mobius, you often get stupidly cheap six-cost cards because you have uh, a zero, two ones, two twos, and then three threes. And, like, look, sometimes you'll get, like, you'll be able to pass and get, like, a three-cost Infinite, and then if you passed on five, you've got a three-cost She-Hulk, and you just did the thing again there. And good luck to your opponents. This is super strong. Um, tons, tons, tons of people are playing it. Our friend Tucker has his own version of this. It's stellar. Um, I believe this version might be Ika's. I saw Ika playing something very similar. I don't know if it's exactly the same. Um, you can do this with just hope. Without the pixie thing, you want a second thing to do. So this version runs magic also. Cool. This version runs magic, and since it runs magic, you can do the same thing as always, where it just goes... Um, pass six and then she hulk and infinite or hulk on seven fine but because you have hope you also have access to that other play pattern either which way absolute ton of power absolute backbreaking 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 plays this is a stellar deck um if you need help on playing it like please do let me know if you're struggling with evolutionary i can easily do a deck guide on this i did if you check the channel fact in the description to the video a full guide on she hulk evolutionary be forewarned that some versions of this run Leech. You won't know that on ladder, whether they have Leech or not, so just play as if they do. But I did a full guide on how to play with and against this. It's in the um, channel fact, which is in the description to this video. All right, our deck is Lambithanos Hope Summers. So our friend Dot Geo, who I think is, again, either the first or second best player in Snap, along with Lambi, uh just won a tournament with this by using Professor X in the Devil Dinosaur spot. Professor X is great, y'all. I don't know if you do that, but he is. Mobius is absolutely stellar right now and belongs in freaking every deck that you can jam into. Everything else about this deck is relatively self-explanatory. If you get Hope going on three, especially if there's a one there, one into Hope into Cull is sick. Um, hope into just like Mobius slash Jeff nonsense means you can just start cheating out massive amounts of energy. And as you cheat out massive amounts of energy, you probably win because nothing puts out power quite like Thanos, thanks to Blob, thanks to Scar. And if your opponent doesn't have Mobius, your Scar is absolutely backbreaking. There, it's relatively simple to just get Scar stupidly cheap because you can get so freaking big with this deck. Yeah, this is completely wild. Um, you also don't need hope. Um, there's also, there are plays that, there are plenty of Psylocke on turn three plays that win games of Marvel Snap. You can also Psylocke on two to go call on turn three, um, and then just start going off with Scar on turn four, and just, just this deck is sick. All right, also, please note, my variants did not come through for this deck. I don't know why I decided not to fight with Marvel Snap, so I'm just calling it a day. All right, so Hope can be Wave, and you don't like, like, it's a much worse deck because Wave is, um, symmetrical and Hope is asymmetrical. 
Thanos is required. You can try Infinite and She-Hulk for a Blob and Scar. Hopefully at this point in the video, you know what the Infinite and She-Hulk playline is in a deck that runs Hope. Um, I think it's worse, but I think it's doable because Blob is a better card and easier to play than Infinite. Um, I think you need Call for the best versions. I think Thanos is like every Thanos deck runs Call. Jeff or, Morbi or Mobius can be Nico, Kara, and Arrow in general. Uh, those are all fine. And if you would like to watch The Goat play, twitch.tv slash TV. So, day one infinite with a 69% win rate. Turn one, draw rock. Draw with your stones. Turn two, draw with your stones is better than Jeff, which is more or less equal to Psylocke if you played a stone on one and have Goblin in hand. Turn three, hope is your priority. Psylocke and Time Stone are fine. And Mobius is also fine. Turn four, call on hope. Um, or if you can, drop a five. Turn five is a big card if call um, and scar. Sorry, if you assume they don't have Shang-Chi, you play a big card, especially if you have call out and scar in hand. If not, you just drop vision and let vision help you win the game. Vision is still a ton of power. Turn six, blob or scar with a bunch of stuff, notably Shang. If you can go scar and Shang, that's often backbreaking. Finally, this deck may want Elsa Bloodstone in it. I think Elsa adds a really, really, really reasonable chunk of power to it. I'm not sure what the hell I would cut, but I think Elsa would be really good here because Jeff and Vision getting plus two or whatever with the Soul Stone, uh, sorry, not Soul, Space Stone getting plus two is Hugh freaking Mungus. Um, I'm going to give you a hip count that you can't actually see. Psylocke, Jeff, Mobius, Vision, Blob, Magneto. So we've got six hips in the deck, which is a perfectly reasonable amount for this one. Props to Lambi for the huge deck. You and .geo coming with the same deck means it's probably the best deck, which is going to be where my working assumption lies. All right. My variant shop for today got nothing bought. I almost bought this group. And then I went, wait, don't I have a baby group? And yep. And while I like this new baby group better, I'm not buying two baby groups. However, Kenny TCG, one of our uh, loyal viewers, asked what my favorite baby variants were. So I, since Rocket's also in the shop, here's the baby group I have. Here's the baby Rocket I have. And then since Professor X is here, here's the baby Professor X. I'll show some baby variants for the next few days, just so uh, Kenny can see what baby variants I like. I have um, two Lockjaws, including the hip. I have like four Storms. Excuse me. I have two Moon Knights. Actually, I have more than two Moon Knights. I actually have the baby Moon Knight. But um, my favorite Moon Knights are the Mr. Knight and then the Hellfire Gala one. Hellfire Gala one's one of my favorite variants. Um, check the podcast. We talk about our favorite She-Hulk variants. I have like four or five deaths, and I don't like chibi art very much. I like the babies. I don't love the chibi. So I'm good on variants. Thanks, though. Um, please give us better bundles soon. All right, certain tiers of support on our Patreon come with honor. Thanks. We have Abigail Kiesler, Magister Burnout, Cables, David G. Winfield, Direwolf, LAB, Father Newman, Good Dog Gamer, Inc., Jay Nevery, J.D. McDonaldino, Akila Platano, Irtix Lee, Koi Ray, Doku, Philip Brackovich, Haplo, Kenny Loggins, Rob Silverman, Robert Rivern, The Biza, J. Bussy, X Force V, Skippy G, Tommy Nyquist, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Models, Lou Antunes, Matt Conduit, Matt H, Mikey Hijinx, No Flex, Oculares, Pretty Chill, Seamus, Spike Jones, Two Ties, The Pirate King, Tucker, The Homie Min, and of course, Gunny T. We'll see y'all tomorrow for the podcast, released right here on this channel. Sunday, we'll be back with our Snap Judgments League coverage. We're going to cover two new decks and then turn them into gameplay with them. Monday will be Snap Fan Open Tournament coverage. Hit that sub, hit that like, hit that comment. Thank you for watching this whole video. If you're interested in doing more, check out the Patreon. We offer you really cool stuff there. We'll see you tomorrow for Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Peace.